everybody, it's Aiden here once again, and welcome back to some R Factor 2, as it's time for a tutorial video. Now, this video comes off the back of the recently updated shaders for R Factor 2 that allow us, the users, to create more advanced custom paints for our cars. With these new shaders, we can have metallic effects, we can have chrome effects, and even create some Need for Speed underground style pearlescent paint. So no longer will everyone's custom liveries all look the same, and now we can have oodles of fun creating our own custom liveries. So this tutorial is mainly for those on the R Factor 2 forums who have been struggling to understand the written instructions that have been provided. Whether that's because English is not your first language or you learn better from watching videos, but since this is going on my YouTube channel, it's open to everyone. Now for this video, to edit the skin, I'll be using GIMP, which is essentially free Photoshop. It can open the .psd files that are needed to create your custom skins. And the reason I'm using GIMP is because this tutorial is aimed at the amateur painter that doesn't necessarily want to pay a subscription for or can't afford the subscription for Photoshop. Now with free software, sometimes it is a bit hit and miss, sometimes they miss out all the cool stuff, like how HitFilm, for instance, which is what I used to create the intro to this video, can't do all the stuff that After Effects can, for instance. But don't worry, everything that Photoshop can do, GIMP can as well. You've just got to do it in a slightly different way. So with all that out of the way, we can move on to actually getting all of this set up to get our skin into R Factor 2. But before we get into GIMP, we need to do something in the sim first. So we're currently in showroom view, looking at the Studio 397 Aston Martin, and I've chosen this because it's probably the easiest car to paint out of the lot. And in the bottom right of the corner, I'm just gonna press enter to bring the screen up, we need to go down to the bottom and create, uh, sorry, go and click on create DIR. What this has done, it's created a folder in this user data player settings Aston Martin Vantage GT3 2019 blah, blah 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 and we'll put the skin into that and then we can load it up and, and all that good stuff so what I need to do now is I'm going to hit reload I'm going to cut here because it takes forever to do it on my computer but I'll be back in a second so welcome back I've uh, just reloaded the skin as you can see it's now zoomed out and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the bottom here and click on this little uh, sort of bracket thing and select the uh, alternate skin that has uh, appeared. What I do next is I click on create and this is gonna create a virtual ride, which is essentially the next car that will appear in the car selection screen under Aston Martin. So I'm gonna give it, uh, and I've gotta give the guy a name. Uh, there's already an Aiden Millwood in the sim. I can't use Aiden Millwood again because I'm using it with McLaren. And I'm gonna give him just a, a generic name. I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him Dave. Uh, his team name is uh, I don't know, uh, A, A, come on. There we go. A, M, Motorsports. Give it a car description. This is the bit that will appear in the uh, car selection bit. So I'm just going to call it A, M, M, S, P, uh, Dave. There we go, uh, and then the car number uh, 69 because I'm 12. So I'm gonna hit accept, and that's gonna create a new line in the car selection bit. So once we click accept, we'll wait for it to do its thing, and then we can fire up GIMP and get uh, working on the skin. So once you've done all of that, you can now load up your skin in GIMP. And as a quick note, when I filled in the virtual ride details, like I say, there was already an Aiden Millward for the McLaren. If you use the same driver name twice, it will not appear in the car selection screen. So that's a very important thing to remember. So I've prepared a very basic bog standard livery here uh, for the Aston Martin. I'm using Umbrella Corporation logos because I've been hooked on the Resident Evil 2 remake for the last couple of weeks and it's my favorite game series of them all. But I've set all of this up in such a way that will make the most of at least four of the region layers that Studio 397 has prepared for us. So I'm going to set up a layer for the base paint layer, a layer that will have metallic on it, a layer for the sponsors, and a layer that will have chrome. So the base paint layer will be black, the red bits will be metallic with some pearlescent effects thrown in just to make it look a bit pretty, and the chrome will be the grey areas you can see on the front and rear bumper as well as on the sides. Now when you're painting, it's very, very important that you keep everything separate when setting up your paints. Now I've done a tutorial video on painting before where that was just bare minimum to get something into the game. And I painted over this main color layer here. 
don't do that because it will end up locking everything onto the base paint layer and you won't be able to move them around and you're going to end up applying like metallic effects or chrome effects to stuff that you don't necessarily want to be metallic or chrome. So what you need to do is you just need to right click anywhere like I've got here on paint and then just click new layer group and it's going to create a new layer group and you can put your livery, sponsors, chrome, then everything is separate from each other. I'm just going to uh, just delete. No, don't. Uh... So what you can do is just name them whatever you want. So like I say, I've got chrome, livery, sponsors, everything's separate. So let's assume that this is the livery we're going to use in our factor two. So what we now need to do is go up to the top here and we've got this thing called region. We've been provided with region one, two, three, four, five, and a region alpha. And if it helps, rename these layers to what you intend to use them for. So for region one, I'm gonna call that livery. Region two, I tend to use for carbon fiber, but I'm not using carbon fiber on this skin because it's black anyway, it doesn't really matter. Region three, I am going to go for region three. That can be the chrome effect. Region four, uh, well actually region five, I'm gonna have that as the base layer. Region four, I'm gonna have that. That's going to be the sponsors, isn't it? Yes. That's the only one that's uh, like that. So we've done that, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, we're going to start from the bottom and just work our way up. So go to livery. I'm going to go down to add layer mask and then black full transparency. Add that. And then we're going to apply a layer mask to our livery, which is here. There's two ways you can do this. You can right click the livery folder and select alpha to selection. That's going to select all of the red bits. But the speed stripe that you can see here just above the umbrella logo, that's a bit dodgy because of the way it is. It was basically just a rectangle that I've filled in. So if I select it, it's just going to select the rectangle. It's not going to select the red bit, which is the bit I want. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to click on livery. And you can see this blue box around it. I'm going to click on the magic wand tool. And I'm going to click on, just make sure that's selected. Yep. And then click on this red bit. You see that the red bit has now been selected all around the edge. I'm going to shift click all of these bits here like so there we go and then i'm going to set this to white get the bucket fill and make sure fill whole selection has been selected come up click on livery here make sure you've got a white box around the layer mask and then click on any of the red bits if you can sort of get close to your screen, you'll see some white bits have been uh, revealed on here. Now what you need to do is you just need to repeat this process for everything. So for the sake of argument, let's go to the Chrome layer. I'm going to right click it again. I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to go black full transparency again. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find my... Uh, Oops, not that one. I need to go to my Chrome folder. Now this one, I can just go alpha to selection. As you can see, it's selected all of the chromey bits. Come back up and go to the Chrome bit. Click on the bucket fill tool, find my Chrome. Click there, and as you can see, it's whited these bits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna repeat the same process for each one. I'm not gonna do the whole thing just to save time. And I'll cut here, and once it's all done, we can uh, move along. So once you've done all the layer masks and all of that good stuff, just simply rearrange all of those region layers, uh, layers, layers, <laughs> until a bit my tongue, until you've got something that vaguely resembles the livery that you want. Now we need to export this, so we need to go up to the top. We need to flatten the image. And then we need to export as. Now I need to go into uh, my recently used. I need to go to here. I'm just trying to shortcut my way, but you need to go into the sort of the player settings folder and then find the Aston Martin, which is going to be up here. I've got a lot of stuff on here, haven't I? Find Dave's folder and uh, we need to go to 
we, well, I say we don't need to go to. We need to name it. Sorry, alt underscore. I'm going to call it umbrella, and then region. So what this does is it's going to tell R Factor 2 that these are the bits you need to apply the different layers to. Very important it's called Alt, very important it's got Region, because otherwise it won't work. And you need to export it as a .dds file, which requires a plugin, and I'll leave the plugin in the description box for you. It's very easy to install. So export, compression and DXT1, and there we go. Undo. And now we need to do the same thing, but for the actual livery. So we need to turn that off. Then we need to find the wireframe, which I think is in parts. Yes, it is. All right, get rid of that. And then do the same thing. We need to flatten the image. Export as. And export it as exactly the same file name. Just take out region. Like so. And export. There we are. Now we need to go back into our factor 2. And we can start applying the shaders. Alright then. So we're back in our factor 2. Finally. And we just need to select our car. Which is you know, Dave's car in this case. Alt tab out of it and go into your web browser of choice, which is Firefox in my case, and then head to the link that I provided in the description box for you, and we can get on with applying the right shaders to each layer. And this is all in real time as well, so no need to keep messing around with going in and out of the sim. So we'll start with the white layer, and this is the part where you need to remember which bits you assigned where, but I know for a fact that white is the base colour of my car, so I'm just going to apply car paint. There we go, it's looking a really nice black colour now. Then we need to go to the black layer, which is the only layer that can use metallic. Remember that. So I'm going to go to shiny vinyl. You can see, I hope it's coming through well on this because YouTube's going to compress the hell out of it. But we can see that that's now gone nice and shiny. Hopefully we'll have some better luck with the chrome, which I think chrome was green. I've written these down. Uh, red we haven't used. I'm reading this off my script. So go to green. So oh, sorry, green was matte vinyl. So you can see matte vinyl there, or you can have shiny vinyl. I'm gonna leave it on shiny vinyl. You can probably see the difference between the two. That the red on the umbrella logo is a bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And blue was the uh, the chrome. So we're gonna click on chrome here, and you can see we've got a nice chrome effect car is now looking mighty nice if I do say so myself you can see that there and now we can play around with the metallic effects now so I'm just gonna tab this I should have really put this into windowed mode but you know you live and learn don't you but we can go to metallic flake color and you can see I'm, I'm you know it doesn't look particularly nice but I'm hoping you can see how it looks here uh, so we've got red, so I'll put maybe another red, or a lighter red maybe, or this pink, no, or white. Actually, the white looks pretty cool. So we'll go on that, and then you can turn the metallic flake colour up and down as you see fit. It's probably not going to come through very well, but anyway, that's all good. So once you've set it all up, you just simply hit reload, and that saves it, and you're done. Hopefully... If you followed everything as I've done it, it will work. And I apologise if it has been a bit all over the place, but you know I'm trying to read a script while doing it. So once you've done all of that, you can now take it onto track and start decimating the rest of the field in your kick-ass looking car. So hopefully this tutorial has been of use to you. Uh, it's been kind of cobbled together. Hopefully you've understood it. If not, leave a comment in the comment section and I will try and help you. And until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. If you've enjoyed this video or it's helped you, please give it a like. If you want to see more uh, clowning around in cars in the virtual world, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you all again very soon for another video. So until next time, goodbye.